Hello, my friends. Well, man, I'm making a quick pit stop out here. I've got my uh, my uh, hearth and spindle, and all I need now is a bow for my bow and drill kit. So we're gonna wander down here a little ways and see if we can't cut one off real quick. Also, this is just kind of like a quick update video. I wanted to let y'all know, those of you that don't know or don't listen to Mad Bad Voodoo, Cutlery Lover has been hacked and uh, it's not looking good. I, I don't know if y'all remember a month or so ago or a few weeks ago when I couldn't get into my account and I was very, very upset about the lack of support that I got from, from YouTube. Because frankly, guys, they just don't keep a record of that stuff. Uh, and unfortunately, Cutlery Lover got hacked and he did not uh, have any backup on any of the videos that he made. All those videos, over 300 of them were just lost. Uh, whoever hacked him closed his account down and it's a damn shame, I'm telling you. He had some good videos and I wouldn't into all the stuff that he does, but but uh, I, uh, I really look forward to logging on to YouTube and seeing what he had going. I loved his uh, hot sauce and pepper reviews and stuff. So uh, I'm not holding out much hope that he's gonna be able to get uh, his account reactivated. You have to uh, contact YouTube through your account if you have a trouble, and he can't do that because his account's been deleted. I don't know if you've noticed, but you try and go to any cutlery lover uh, uh, video, and it says this user closed his account. This video no longer available. So it's a real drag. So, and like I said, none of his videos were backed up. So that's all gone. And uh, my understanding is. If you ever downloaded any of his videos, uh, he probably would want that if you could mail it to him or, or, or just hold on to it for him until he opens a new account, which is probably going to be what he has to do. But you know, he had 70,000 subscribers. Dude, that is, uh, that's a real bummer. That's some deer sign right down here. Where is it? Yeah, that's a real bummer. He lost 70,000 subscribers. And uh, what Mad Bad Voodoo says is that is a major part of his income. Uh, Jeff really relied on that. You know, he was a YouTube partner. So he's trying to get hold of YouTube and uh, see if they have something where his account's backed up at least. You know, he may have to reload all those videos. He may have to, uh, you know, everybody resubscribe again. But uh, if that happens, you know, by golly, I'm gonna do it. That's part of my update. Just let y'all know what's happening with Jeff. And uh, shoot. I guess I could show you what I've done here. Uh, as you guys know, I had a Mora. Love the Mora. But uh, it wasn't getting really good strikes on my uh, Ferrisium rod. So I said, let me try the blade part. And boy, it kicked out some sparks, but unfortunately, it burned the blade and and uh, I could reground it and it's just not the same. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna order a new one, I thought. And uh, I got to researching and I found these uh, martini knives. And uh, dudes, I am more than happy with these. 
it's got a this is a finished knife it's not from Sweden like the Mora but uh, my understanding is it's a little better made it's got a three-quarter tang where the the Mora has a quarter tang and as you can see the blade is much thicker uh, I'm sorry I don't have any of the specs guys like I said I'm out here in the woods looking for a bow but uh, it, you can see that it's much thicker than a normal Mora and it's just a better made knife same thing as a Mora you know Scandi grind and uh, you know very very similar the blades are it's, it's got the uh, uh, the jimping right here and for your thumb and you know blade signed I really love it I'm really happy with this knife and of course let me just kind of half ass slide that in I gotta put this down now, for a second guys here is the uh, here's my uh, ferro rod fire starter and uh, I got an antler uh, and I got this coin. Let's focus, focus. I don't know if you guys can see that. It is a buffalo nickel. It is a domed buffalo nickel. Now back in the day, I understand that people used to take these silver nickels and they dome them and put a little piece on the back, a little loop, and make buttons out of them for the coats. It was kind of like a little fad back in the day, and I happened to find one on eBay, and man, I scooped it up. And uh, as you can see, I recessed it into the uh, crown on this antler, and uh, it, I, I'm really pleased with it. And uh, I drilled me a little hole in there, and on this end, I, I put a 3 8 inch hole for this 3 8 inch ferro rod. This is a Michy Metal. Uh, Gob spark, gob spark, Michigan metal uh, fire steel, and it will put out the sparks. It's five inches long total. I got an inch of it up in here, and then four inches sticking out. So, and I got, uh, of course, uh, my buddy recommended the custom sheath. I think Bob's Outdoors makes those, and uh, I think I picked that up for a little more than twenty bucks. And by the way, these knives, ones that are better than the Morris, they're only two or three dollars more than the Morris. So, uh, anyway, I wanted to pass that along to you guys too. Well, I'm kind of curious about how you guys pick your bows. <clears throat> I guess everybody's got a different method, and I like different trees for the spindle in their hearth. But, uh, oh, is that a squirrel? I mean, a. Uh, yeah, thought I was stepping on a turtle there for a second, fellas. <clears throat> I'm seeing some nice natural curve on this limb right here. And I really don't know how long I need to make it. But that son of a gun right there, I think that's the one I'm going to use. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, shoot. I'll make another one. Let's see what we got down here in the in the Maxpedition pack. Of course, if I want to cut an instrument, for the most part, you know I'm going to use SOG. I like SOG. I'm doing all this crap one-handed. I came down here without a without a uh, tripod or anything. Okay, that ought to do the trick. What do you guys think? Right about there. Sorry for the crappy filming. Like I said, I'm multitasking here. Ah. All right. Short work of that. Let me walk down off of this. Yeah, I'm pretty bummed out about old Jeff. Uh, I, like I said, I did not like all of his videos. And uh, I just loved his hot sauce reviews. I liked his knife reviews. And I even like some of his cooking stuff. Uh, 
I didn't care much for his his uh, home tours, but uh, but uh, he he made good videos, man. I'm gonna miss him if he doesn't get that rectified. Stand by one. Let me trim this limb up. Okay, fellas, that's how we're gonna roll. Uh, like I said, I don't have uh, any experience at this, but that is going to be my bow for now. And uh, if it doesn't work out, man, I'll come out and trim another one off, you know. Anyway. Well, let's get out of here. It's Sunday morning. Hmm. Coyote. Can you see the uh, claw points? Man, uh, we've been having a lot of sightings of mountain lions down in this area lately. So I'm always kind of keeping an eye out for that stuff. Back up over those hills, that's where I do all my hiking guys, back in that area. And it's a pretty good area of woods back in there. Uh, some pretty good hills to climb if you're a fat old man. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I'm always keeping my eyes open for a big cat sign. Uh, I got a lot of comments, uh, not posted, personal private messages <laughs> coming in over that last video. And, uh, Some of them were in support, and some of them weren't. You know, like I said, it was a pretty crappy thing to do, and I've acknowledged that. But what I hope everybody understands is, you know, uh, the, the ladies might not, <clears throat> but the guys, they're going to tell you, Gambling is a serious thing. You don't, uh, you don't play around with crap like that. And back in that day, I was a really serious pool shooter. And me and Dave, we'd just jack around. Uh, we'd go into a bar and, and uh, take over a table, drink, and play all night and have a good time. But, uh, I let two lives intermingle there and cross where, where one, I'm just having fun with my partner and the other, if somebody crossed me, I got to kick their ass. So I just kind of mix those two up and, uh, and, uh, I made a big mistake. So. You know, I've apologized for it, and uh, and Dave's the one that uh, I owed the apology to, and he's really the only one that I need to explain it to, but I don't have to explain it to him because he knows. He's, uh, and I'm sure he's, uh, I'm sure he's forgiven me already. So, that's not even an issue. I do appreciate y'all's personal messages, though, and uh, I appreciate your concern. And I owed him that apology for a long time, so that's a done deal. Roger? Now, uh, there's the original moor, guys. I haven't done anything with it. But like I said, I kind of I kind of scuffed the blade up right here, and I lined it out as best I could. But you guys know, once you've done that, it's going to be a deal, and even if you, even if you uh, do a super job on it, you're always going to know that the blade is damaged right there. And uh, I don't know if you can notice, see the back edge. After I damaged that, I went ahead and put a notch in there for that fire steel, and uh, now it works great. But I just couldn't live with it. I love that companion, but I just couldn't live with it, so. I did order the martini 
and uh, it's Martini from Finland since 1928 and this is the sheath that it came in and that is it, it does come with a leather sheath versus the plastic one you get with a Mora and uh, I'm real happy with it guys really happy uh, thought also while I had you out here I might show you what I'm, I'm working on my uh, my tomahawk shaft and uh, I've been doing a little carving as you can see I've started I got me a snake started right there and uh, I'm just gonna fancy up the shaft a little bit put a little purdy to it make it look uh, natively beautiful Roger and well I got y'all out here thought I'd show you what I did to my uh, BK2 you can tell this bad boy is well used uh, as you can tell I reprofiled the blade and uh, it does have a convex edge on it now but it's a much deeper grind and uh, a sharper angle than it was before that's probably 20 degrees where it was 30 before uh, for an outdoor outdoor knife. I, I don't care. I you know I don't I don't need a knife at a 30 degree angle to maintain uh, sharpness for a longer period of time and be more durable. I can resharpen this every time after I come in if I need to, but most of the time I just throw a strop on it. You know, strop it up a little bit. And as you guys can see, I did a flame job on the on the spine. A little file work. That's my flame job. And I hope that's focusing in. But uh, it, it, it's really pretty when the sun's out. Man, that baby shines up. Throws throws light everywhere. But uh, I'm really kind of happy with this now. It's uh, it's still heavy. It Man, it's a heavy, heavy knife to deal with. Uh, I love the BK2. And if I was out in the wilderness... This would be my knife. This would be my go-to knife. But uh, as it is, this is my survival knife. And I do carry it scout style when I'm so inclined. But for the most part, my go-to knife is that martini. It's lightweight. It's easy to handle. And I'm really just in love with it. Uh, now my, my pal Nick at uh, Whitetail Bushcraft, you guys check him out. He's going to get a, uh, oh, what's it called? A Condor. And I kind of uh, looked those up on Amazon, and that is an affordable little bushcraft knife. I've been looking at the custom-made bushcraft knives, and, man, they're all over $100. Spyderco's is $159 something, uh, or $169. And uh, that's without any custom work to your sheath. So... Uh, for $33 and $29, depending on which model you want, you have a four, four and a quarter, and a and a three and a quarter, I think, uh, inch blade. You can get either one. $34, $35 for a knife, bushcraft knife. That is a good deal. So, I may uh, get one of those just to play with it and uh, see where I go from there. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, my friend at campfire 52 man i'll tell you what he uh, he's the one that turned me on to that sheaf he said go down and check out i think it's bob out bob's outdoor and uh doesn't take him long you get it about a week but uh that martini fit right into the sheath that's custom ordered for that mora uh, that's the more companion sheath at bob's outdoor and uh it was like 20 something bucks and i'm really happy with it I wanted a fire starter attachment. And I hang mine, guys. This is a neck knife. But as you can see, I hang mine horizontally. That's right. Mine looks like that around my neck. So, and I, and I like it like that. Okay, dudes, I guess the last thing I can show you is uh, how the tomahawk head turned out. This is a cold steel trailsman, and uh, I've gotten all that black coating off of there, and uh, buffed it out a little bit. It is cast steel, so it's uh, 
it's it's not going to get a a, a a mirror polish on it uh, and even if i could i'm not willing to do that kind of work on a, a 30 dollar tomahawk head but uh, that's how that turned out and i'm going to put a real dark finish on the shaft and uh like i said native it up a little bit roger it'll be a uh, tribal for me and i think it ought to turn out all right man i hope you guys will excuse the condition of my truck it's a little dirty but a couple of you have asked about uh the electronic equipment i have in here and uh y'all know i work for emergency management and uh i track storms under the auspices of the fire department here the municipal fire department and uh, i have to have multiple forms of radio communication and, and plus i have a cell you know and uh i have to be able to stay in contact with the police the fire department emergency management uh several sheriff's departments it just all depends on the track of the tornado and and uh my equipment will do really more than the highway patrols will uh, i can access multiple frequencies uh and of course, you know, they can always program that stuff in. My, my radio equipment's already programmed in. I just change over to Marshall County or Carter County or whatever county I need to be in. And uh, I can speak with the authorities there uh, directly. So, uh, and the rest of it is just, you know, lighting equipment. Uh, you know, I have a traffic arrow and all that. It's called a traffic advisor. And, and uh, just radio equipment, scanner equipment, lights. And uh, one of these days, I'll make a video on it and uh, and uh, show you how it all operates. Uh, the truck lights up really nicely, and uh, that's pretty good equipment. That's uh, Wheeling and Kenwood and and uh, Icom, and it's uh, it's uh, good stuff. And uh, I get most of my lighting equipment, and I want to say this right now for for any of y'all that are uh, interested in this type of thing, strobes and more does me a great job is that focusing strobes and more man they've got the best deals on high intensity strobe lighting bars you name it they've got a new e66 series that's multi colored you can go red and blue and then if you go over to the traffic advisor side you have all amber lighting i mean the new led lighting is amazing it's super bright now at one time the LED lighting uh, was only visible like if you were right in front of the vehicle. It was the only time you could see it. When you got over here, it was very dim and, and hard to see. But now they've got these new th third generation and fourth generation LED lighting that it, you can see it from the side. And it's still just blindingly bright. So. Anyway, uh, I'll make a separate video on this stuff for you guys that are interested in it. Well, listen, guys. <clears throat> My truck is just filthy. It doesn't get a lot of washing action during the uh, wintertime. So I'm sure you can relate to that. But uh, I sure appreciate y'all joining me. And like I said, if you have any of uh, Jeff's at Cutlery Lover... If you have any of his videos that you've downloaded, hold on to those bad boys because uh, he would sure probably like to have them back once he gets a new channel going. And like I said, I don't see uh, much hope of reviving his old channel. He's probably going to have to open a new channel and start all over again. So uh, as subscribers, you know, we're just going to, we're going to jump right on that wagon and uh, resubscribe and send him his videos when he gets established so but i want to thank y'all for joining me man it's sunday and uh it's 46 degrees out and uh it's gonna be a nice day so y'all enjoy it get out and live guys well hey guys it's uh it's been a busy week already and uh, it's just starting and uh, this may be the last opportunity I get to say Merry Christmas to you guys before uh, Christmas actually gets here. I'm not sure I'm going to have the opportunity to do any more uploads this week. So I really wanted to get with you guys and say uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I hope you all have a uh, really good and safe 
a holiday weekend here. It's uh, it's getting real close, guys. Santa will be here before you know it. I hope everybody was good. This is Wolf, and I'm out. Carter County, 12, hard work. Carter County, 12, go ahead. Give contact info for the caretaker at Mountain Lake.